While spending some time in nature as a family, I have really been craving some DIY time. You know we love using statement artwork to elevate our room designs and making your own ensures that it will be unique and also more budget friendly. But don't worry, you don't need to have any painting skills to do these three techniques that I'm going to be sharing with you today. I think you'll be really surprised with what you can create. Trust me. What is going on everybody? Oh my gosh, we are doing an old school Mr. Kate DIY video today. I'm so excited. You guys know we do full room transformations and all of that, but I wanted to get down to basics and do some art DIYs for you guys, really concentrating on techniques and seeing the full process from beginning to end so you guys can really have some takeaways and some fun projects to do at home because I don't know about you guys I'm constantly needing inspiration these days and I think that creative projects are just how to make yourself feel good and fulfilled and all those things and yes I am sitting in the most beautiful setting right now Joey and Moon and I have kind of escaped LA. We're out in nature. So we brought some art supplies. We brought our cameras because we wanted to obviously film some videos for you guys. So I'm getting a little inspiration from the nature around me, but don't worry. Nature is not a requirement for these art techniques. You can do them from anywhere. And also thank you so much to our awesome sponsor, Rumple. I will be telling you guys more about them in a little bit. And subscribe. Just click that subscribe button and make sure that your bell is on because that makes the difference in getting our notification when we do have a new video, which you won't want to miss because, guys, got some cool ones planned. Let's get into the art, shall we? Ah. So for this first technique, I am calling it thick paint. We know thick is in, right? And it, that applies to your paint as well. There is something about a piece of art when the artist is just unabashed and confident and layers that paint on real thick and lets it dry like all globby. I mean, not, you know, just thick. That makes it look like a confident, professional piece of art. It's so much fun to do. And what I love about it is you don't need paintbrushes. Actually, I would advise you to not use them at all. Don't even touch your paintbrushes. Go into your kitchen, get a spatula. I'm getting two different size spatulas, a big one and a little one. The paint will wash off, don't worry, but you could use an old one if you're concerned. And you're gonna need a canvas or a thick piece of paper, a nice substantial piece of art paper, and some acrylic paint. Obviously pick your color palette, whatever is going to work for your room. Then a finishing touch, which is optional, but really beautiful is this gold leaf. You can order it online, it's not real gold. It's very affordable, I think it's like $7 a packet and you get a ton of sheets. All right, so I'm starting out with my blank canvas. Don't be scared, guys, it's fun. You really cannot go wrong with this technique. So I'm taking my paint tube and I'm just going directly onto the canvas and I'm just smearing in all of the dollops in a horizontal stroke. So one key tip for this first step is make sure that you're working with paints that are in the same color family because as you smear them together, they are going to integrate and if they are too opposite, you might start creating colors that you don't actually want in your piece. I'm gonna make sure that it is fully dry because the next colors that I'm going to use on this, I don't want them to mix in with the background colors. So I'm just putting this canvas in the sun to let it dry and I will come back to it in probably about an hour. So the first step took me all of 15 minutes, so quick and so easy. And now I'm back at it with a new color family. I'm using some black and blue and I'm using a smaller spatula for this step because I'm just going to be using less paint and I wanna smear it in a smaller area. Now I'm mixing in some vertical strokes and I'm just kind of playing with the shapes, letting them be smaller than my strokes before. But again, keeping this paint Thick. I want to see those strokes. So I'm going to try to make this look a little bit like a reflection almost, like a slight water vibe, be it a still lake with some boats on it or something like that, but it is abstract. So the finishing touch is this gold leaf. This stuff is so delicate. So you want to make sure your hands are dry because it will stick all over your hands if they have anything on them. And you want to obviously make sure you're doing this 
when your paint is wet because that will ensure that this leaf will stick to your canvas. Because I don't have any paint brushes on hand, I'm going to use my thumb and give it a good old little thumbprint signature. So I'm just putting a little black paint on my thumb and stamping it down. I'm really happy with how this looks. I'm gonna let it dry entirely and then get it up on the wall to show you guys how good it looks. Hanging up. Hey everyone, wanna quickly tell you about today's sponsor, Rumple. As most of you have seen on TikTok and Instagram recently, we've really been trying to get out into nature. We usually show you how to make your interiors cozy and we especially love a product that can function both outdoors, but also be your cozy go-to inside. Rumpel is an amazing multifunctional and sustainable blanket brand that has recycled over 10 million bottles in making their blankets, as well as offsets their carbon footprint every year with smart features like the cape clip and stuff sack and a big range of colors and collabs with awesome artists. There really is something for everyone's aesthetic. Nothing is better than something that helps you stay cozy no matter where you are. So check out rumple.com to get a better blanket for yourself or as a gift. Thank you so much Rumple, for sponsoring the video. This next art technique is what I am calling mixed media. So I'm sitting in this amazing cactus garden because I just have it around me and I'm getting inspo from this, but you guys do not have to do a cactus for this particular art technique. You could do any kind of object, really. There is something about when you use two different types of media in one piece of art that just elevates it and makes it look like you know what you're doing when maybe you don't. I'm using watercolor and ink. I'm gonna actually do a diptych, so I'm gonna do two different pieces of art that kind of relate to each other, obviously inspired by the cactus garden. And you need some watercolor paints, some paint brushes, a nice cup of water, you might want some paper towels or something to blot your brushes on. And then for the later step, you're going to want uh, your ink so either a marker I'm gonna use probably like a thinner tipped marker or you could use like a just an ink pen not a ballpoint pen more of a felt tip will look better with this technique you really don't want to try to be too exact you want to let the paint kind of bleed and you want your shapes to be sort of irregular and as you can see I'm being really just fast and very sort of sloppy with this really loving how these colors are blended together and now I'm gonna finish off with a, just a little splatter. I actually love doing this because I just feel like it looks very free. It's obviously optional. <laughs> you do not have to splatter your paper. I'm just a little bit of a crazy creative weirdo and I just get taken away sometimes with the art, the fun of it. It's fun. Happy with how the watercolors have all blended together. I'm gonna let them dry now. I definitely wanna make sure that your watercolors are dry before you bring in the ink because the ink will bleed otherwise, which is not the look we're going for. And this is where you're just going to outline your shapes. And I'm doing these outlines just really loose. The more light you are with the pen, the better and more organic it's gonna look. And then I'm going to add the spikes. So I'm just doing like three lines together. That's my technique for doing the spikes is literally just boom, 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 line, line, line. I know anyone can draw a line. You got this. 
And I'm gonna sign this one in the corner cause you gotta sign your artwork guys. And so now I am going to put them in a frame. Now this is a tip that I have used for many years. Go to like Home Goods or TJ Maxx or Ross or those stores and buy an already framed piece of art. And then you just cut open the back with an X-Acto blade. You can use a screwdriver or I didn't even have a screwdriver. I am using a butter knife to flip open the little staples on the back and I'm going to replace the artwork that was inside of these frames with my artwork and then I'm just gonna basically seal the back back up. If as you've opened up the back of your frame, some of the staples have come out, you can always reinforce with a piece of masking tape. The point is with this technique is that it is so much cheaper to go and buy these store-bought already framed art pieces and use these frames as opposed to getting something professionally framed. So that is our mixed media technique, watercolor and ink. You are a pro with very limited artistic talents. Yay, hack! All right, so for this third art hack cheat, I am calling this the ordered row or ordered grid. So this art piece is definitely more of a pop art style art piece and that's because we're doing bright colors, we're doing black outlines. It's just a much more almost like cartoony vibe to it. So for this first step, I'm just painting the background of my canvas. I don't wanna do it on white. I want this to be a big patch of color. I'm actually mixing a few different peachy pinks and reds and whites together. I like to do this because then when you paint it on the canvas, you can see some streaks of some of those other colors and it just kind of adds a little bit more of a textural depth. let this dry before I move on to the next step. Now for my ordered grid, I picked the topic of like kitchen utensils. <laughs> There's actually a lot of kitchen utensils going on in this video now that I think about it, the fact that I used spatulas for the first technique. But guys, it's an example of just like work with what you have, you know? Now I'm going to plan out my layout using a pencil just so I know where I'm placing everything before I paint because I don't want to like get the paint onto the canvas and then realize that I spaced it badly and I have to paint over it. If you can doodle, you can do this artwork. And if all you can doodle is happy faces or a flower, a daisy flower, do that. Like do a series of daisy flowers all doodled out. It will look so cool with pops of color. And I'm just doing these really, really basic. If you are good at doodling, go in there, add some more contour. You could even fill them in. Like I said, I want these to be really approachable for you guys. So I kept them super, super basic and just did really simple outlines with just a little bit of detail on like the handle or adding the dots for the slotted spoon or something like that. Now I'm going to go over my pencil lines with black paint. I actually think this step would be done really easily with like a big fat permanent marker. I kind of wish I had one of those. I didn't bring one with me, but if you have one at home, use like a Sharpie or a permanent marker. Going a step further, I'm actually doing this while Moon is napping to just finish up this painting. I'm going to add some colorful elements as well because I really want it to read pop art. So I'm bringing in some colors, blue and red and orange, and I'm just adding them in little pieces. I have this space at the bottom of my canvas that looked a little empty to me, and so I decided to add a little label. I'm doing it in French because I feel like anything in French just sounds chicer and cute. <laughs> so I'm adding a white background and writing in my black paint la cuisine which means the kitchen so 
style your pop art in a variety of aesthetics. It looks amazing, obviously, in like a modern vibe. It could totally go in like a retro vibe. I've styled it next to one of our Effie chairs. This is one of the chairs from our furniture line in the beautiful mustard color. I just think this yellow and pink together look so beautiful and happy. So that concludes our three art hacks or cheats that will make anyone look like a pro regardless of your artistic talent. It's something to just be proud of every day when you see it and also it's budget friendly. So I hope you're inspired. I would love to see your renditions of these techniques. Please, please, please post them. Follow me on social, tag me. You can use hashtag Mr. Kate too, hashtag creative weirdos. Also, what did we think of this old school Mr. Kate DIY video? Was it fun? Should we do more? It has been literally years since I've done a straight up DIY video for you guys. So if you like it, let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for things you want to see me do in the future. Let me know, I'm all ears. Please subscribe, makes a big difference for us. If you haven't, please check out our furniture line. If you haven't watched that reveal video, it is up on our channel. I'll also put the link in the description so you guys can check out the pieces. So thank you so much for sitting down with me for this DIY art hack video. More power to you, all of you, regardless of your artistic talents, get out there, get creative. I know this winter has been really tough for a lot of people, um, so I hope the springtime comes and brings some sunshine and some inspiration and some happiness to all of your lives. And thank you for watching. It's great to connect with you all. I love you, stay creative, stay weird, stay you, because why not?